In this session, we would understand what are convertible bonds. Before I begin with convertible bonds, let's understand a basic difference between bond versus stock. Bond is there where you are committed for a fixed tenure. It could be 5 years, 10 years, 3 years, whatever is your commitment time frame. And that's what is bond. Stock has a free amount. That means it must, if it appreciates in value, you can sell it at any point of given time. However, uh, also important to note that stocks do not provide you fixed interest. There is no fixed interest. However, in the case of bond, there is a fixed interest. So this is a basic difference between bond and stock. Why I have introduced that? Because we are saying convertible bonds. Convertible bond, as the name suggests, has an option to switch between bond and stock. Now, since we are clear with what is bond, what is stock, we can move forward. Bond is there for a fixed tenure with a fixed interest. However, stock does not have fixed interest, does not have fixed tenure. You can sell the stock as soon as you feel that the rate is rising or you feel that in future the rate could decline. So that is how a stock works. Bond, once you have committed for 5 years, 3 years, 10 years, you would have to hold it. Now, a very good example I can take here for a convertible bond. I can say, let's say I have a bond issued for 100 rupees. Now this 100 rupees bond I have to hold for 10 years at 4% interest. That means I'll keep on getting that 4% interest and after 10 years I have an option to switch to the stock or to keep it as a bond. Now there are various forms in which this would work. So let's first understand how convertible bond works. So convertible bonds actually are there for a fixed tenure at a fixed interest rate and companies issue convertible bond to usually keep their interest rate lower as compared to the other ones because the company is providing you an option to switch into stock sooner or later. So that is another reason why convertible bonds are usually kept at a lower interest rate than uh, the the other uh, uh, the other things in market the reason simply being it also gives you a preference now when is that preference that preference comes at the time of dilution of the bond so bonds are there as a fixed rate interest now what are the types of bond the first type of bond is a regular bond regular bond means let's say i have a bond for 100 rupees at 4% for a tenure of 10 years that means after my tenure expires for 10 years i can switch to the stock and this stock the share that I would get would be at the pre-promised rate of prior to the 10 year that I was promised. So let's say in the real market, the rate per share is 20 rupees per share, but my original price was rupees 10 per share. So I would get all the, uh, my bonds would be converted into share at the price of 10 rupees, which was confirmed at the time of booking the convertible bond. So that is a regular bond. Mandatory bond mandates that once you have the tenure of 10 years that is done for the bond, you would definitely convert it into stock. It does not give you an option. But mandatory has a higher risk factor because it provides a higher rate of return as compared to other so it provides a higher interest rate and the only reason it provides a higher interest rate is that after 10 years it is forcing you to convert into stock at that time the stock prices could decline it could go up it is unknown at this at this given point reverse as the name suggests is a reverse process that means at that point the bond could be converted into share but if you don't want to keep it into share you can take it as bond again. So I have a bond for 10 years, after 10 years it would convert into a share, but if I don't want to keep it as a share, I can go back to the bond. But this would be decided by whom? This would be decided solely by the company, whether the company wants to convert it or reverse convert it, that means keep it as bond only. So that would be onto the company's discretion. 
clear so this is solely on the company's discretion whether the company wants to keep it as a bond or convert it into stock 10 years later or after the tenure is completed the next is exchangeable exchangeable are interesting convertible bonds because both the bond and the stock are from different issuers let's say one is yahoo the other is google as simple as that so the two companies that are issuing the bond and the stock are different and therefore we call it as an exchangeable convertible bond the next is con uh, contingent convertible bond contingent convertible bond means that let's say i have a bond i have this for a given tenure but i have committed to a share price of let's say 20 rupees per share now as soon as the market price goes up then 20 rupees per share my bond would automatically get converted into stock so none of them would have to do anything the bond would automatically transform from bond to a stock as soon as the price goes beyond 20 per share and we call this as contingent convertible bond. The next is foreign currency convertible. Foreign currency convertible means that you have an option to convert it into other denominations other than the issuing country. So let's say it's issued in India. So the INR, the currency is INR or rupees. Now you have an option to convert it into dollar. You have an option to convert it into pound, yen or whatsoever currency is there. The next type of convertible bond is vanilla and embedded. Vanilla convertible bond means what? Vanilla convertible bond means that it's a convertible bond which, which ensures that if the stock price I commit for 20 rupees per share, as soon as the price goes more than 20 rupees per share, I would have an option to convert it into stock. If not, it would remain as bond. Clear? So we call this as vanilla convertible bond. Now, vanilla convertible bond gives me an option that if the price turns higher than the stock price, then the, uh, the bond would be converted into a stock. However, the contingent bond makes it mandatory to convert a bond into a stock as soon as the set price is reached. So that's the difference. Embedded means the options. Now here there are two kinds of option. One is call option, the other is put option. What is the difference between call option and put option? Call option means, let's say I hold the share for 10 rupees per share now, but I project that this share would rise in the next week. So here I have the right to buy a stock. When I say I have the right to buy a stock, that means uh, I can actually uh, this first of all this call option has a limited time frame so it could be seven days one month whatsoever the time frame is given let's say it is for seven days and i take a call option i take a call option at 12 rupees that means if the share price increase beyond 12 then i'll get the given profit but in case it does not whatever initial amount is there that also won't reside with me but in the case of options you don't hold physical shares with you there are no physical shares with me i'm just having an option at the point i see in the market that i committed it to 10 rupees it was 10 rupees i committed it to 12 rupees and as soon as the price rise beyond it, I can immediately buy it at 10 rupees and sell it at 12 rupees and I'll get the difference amount. But if it is less, then I would, I would lose all the money that has been invested. Put on the other hand says the other way around. You have the option to sell the stock. That means you forecast that in the next seven days, the rate would fall. If I say the present rate is 10 rupees per share, it could five, fall to 5 rupees per share. In case it does not fall below 10, then I lose everything. In case it falls, whatever difference it falls is, I get that amount under the put option. Usually under embedded convertible bonds, we focus mainly on the call option because that's on the positive side uh, where you have an option of growth or the growing stock. However, the put option says where the prices for the stock would be declining. So again, important difference. So these are some of the types of convertible bonds. Coming on to advantages and disadvantage. Advantage would be on two sides. One is on the side of investor. 
द अदर इज ऑन द साइड ऑफ इशूइंग अथॉरिटी ऑन द साइड ऑफ इन्वेस्टर वॉट इज द बेनिफिट ऑन द साइड ऑफ इन्वेस्टर इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लोअर रिस्क द सेकेंड इज इफ देर इज अ कंपनी डायल्यूशन और कंपनी डिफॉल्ट इन दैट केस द इन्वेस्टर्स वुड बी गिवेन प्रायोरिटी एंड thirdly the risk is minimized because investment is guaranteed the next is issuing authorities for the issuing authorities what is the advantage the advantage is company can put off the share dilution at any point later right and therefore company has opportunity to part participate in the process of valuation of the share another important thing that we need to understand with convertible bond is the disadvantage there are several inv uh, investors which enjoy the options the call and the put option now the interest earned with a convertible bond is relatively lower than the fixed income securities and therefore it is less preferred and this is one of the disadvantages the second disadvantage is if the bond holder says or takes a decision to cash out the amount okay so whatever the conversion is if the bond holder says that i want the cash right now now in that case what would happen the price of the share would fall and this would be detrimental to the company and therefore this is again a undue disadvantage of a convertible bond so in this class we have understood what are convertible bonds what are the advantages disadvantages and the various types of convertible bonds we'll be covering many interesting topics in economics stay tuned